All six, including the four Republicans from Kentucky, voted against the U.S. Constitution. And him and I had an argument about that on my radio show. Since that time, something's happened to him. Because I talked to him on, on uh, Thursday of last week, and he told me, he said, Leland, he goes, I've never seen anything like this. This is a congressman, United States congressman. I've never seen anything like this. He said, there's a revolt brewing up here. The conservatives are getting so much flack from their people back home, Democrats and Republicans, there's a revolt brewing up here. He said, especially around this cap and trade thing. These, this is not going to stand. And he, said, and, he said, and he was wearing in his office the, don't, the uh, join or die, the Benjamin Franklin pen. And he's ordered a bunch of them to give out to his, give out to his constituents. Now this is a politician speaking. But when you have a politician sitting alone in his office in Washington, D.C. wearing a join or die pen, that means that something's going off. There's a light going off. You people turned it on. And that's what's going to stop this. So it's working. It is working. What we're doing is working. And that's really why I wanted to have that kind of this part of the conversation, because it's important that we know that. Yeah. A speech that he made the other day, um, he will not tolerate any delays, you know, on uh, passing this uh, health care reform. Obama said he wouldn't tolerate any delays. The reason in, in the health care bill, the reason is because that's the game. Game, set, match. Nationalized health care is it. And they know it. They'll give up on cap and trade. They'll even give up on the stimulus bill. They will not give up on nationalized health care. Um, the overreaching, far-reaching expense of our liberties in this bill is, is unfathomable. Um, I just share a personal story with you. I found out my grandfather has terminally ill cancer this week. And under this system... He's 90. He's lived a long, full life. But under this system, they'll just try to make him comfortable. Now, Obama not only has the power of the pen and the power of the treasury, but he has the power of life and death. And we live in a country that is willing to exterminate its own children before they're born. Then who are we to stop them from saying that this person or that person is too expensive to keep alive? The power of life and death in government is one of the most atrocious, most scary, most despotic powers that, that can ever be imagined. It's why our founding fathers said we have the right to life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. It's unalienable. It's given to us by a God, by a Creator. It's not given to us by a man. We're ruled by a country of laws, not of men. And that is very, very important because this bill goes around that and it literally crushes the Constitution. It is so important. And then the health care bill is, is awful because it's hard to get your head around it. Even as a, as a talk show host, I've read so much and it's like, God, I don't even know everything that's in this thing. It's unbelievable. It's a thousand pages long. Uh, your privacy rights go away. The Treasury Department, under this bill, can request your medical records. Why? They want to make sure you're not going to die pretty soon so they get all the tax money from you? I mean, what's the point of that? So it's huge. It's a game changer. That's why he won't accept delays. That's where we have to focus our efforts, at least on a national level. Yes, they want to do it before August. All the way in the back. If cap and trade is not passed, Congress is suddenly Well, it's interesting that you bring that up. The question was, how's Obama going to pay for the plan? Uh, because he said the cap and trade had $600 billion for the, uh, the health care plan. They just announced yesterday $600 billion in new taxes in the health care plan. So there's your slide one out, slide one in. They're trying to cover that up that way. The other thing that's interesting is this whole thing is going to collapse economically. Because they just, they basically gave the FDA control over uh, t tobacco. Boo. Yeah. Um, they, gave the, they gave the FDA control over tobacco, which means they're absolutely going to crush that industry. They're going to lose all the revenue they just tried to get from increasing the taxes on it. And so it's going to end up, they're going to run out of rich people to tax. But they've taken that $600 billion out thinking they were going to get it from cap and trade and replaced it with taxes. Everything from cell phone taxes to, uh, to uh, 50 cents or 57 cents on gasoline, a gallon of gas. All that stuff's hidden in this 1,000-page bill. So uh, again, 
If they, this guy, you got 13 bucks back from him, right? Is that, we all get our 13 bucks? You know, I think that's all gone now. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that, and 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 I I understand. Yeah, I understand they're going to be taxing all of those benefits anyway. They will tax. They've now to flip their position, and they're going to be taxing um, all of the health care benefits, even even for uh, upper middle class and and on up in the in the pay scale. So it's it's a game changer. Let me get. Go ahead. Personalized form letter? Personalized form letter that nowhere in it did he take a stand of no. And that worries me. What well, worries me? Well, it's interesting because I actually just uh, dashed off a, a, an email to someone in his office about another issue that regarded a tax, and it had to do with the radio industry. And I got the same kind of response. There was no position. We're going to take a look at this legislation, yeah. and we'll get back to you. Uh, I understand that, uh, that that's something that's going on quite a bit with politicians right now. So here's, here's an idea that I want to give you guys before I finish up here based on what you said. One of the things that's important for us to do, and I know it's hard to stomach it, we've got to go when these politicians speak at local events. We need to show up. Because I, I thought of this the other day, um, and, and David Adams had a nice post on his Bluegrass, uh, on, on KY Progress, about Dr. Daniel Mongiardo, who's running for Jim Bunning's seat, and Jack Conway with regards to the cap-and-trade bill. And somebody cornered Man Monjardo and asked him where, whether he stands for cap-and-trade or not. And he, of course, said no. Well, the National Democratic Party is not going to like that stand. Um, we've got to go out and force the candidates of either party to take positions publicly so that it gets in the news. That will change. That will help to influence what people perceive those posi their positions to be. I'm done. I am done with these politicians giving me rope-a-dope answers. I'm done with it. So we've got to show up. It's our responsibility. If you hear they're at a Chamber of Commerce event, they're getting up there speaking their little whatever, corner them. Get right up in them. You know? I have a question about how the president will stand up and say we have to pass legislation now to remove the secret ballot from workers. That's it. That's the the question was about the secret ballers, uh, ba ballot from uh, from unions. I believe they call it car check. Um, fortunately, there's been enough rabble rousers like us that have that have also stymied that bill. But um, it's pretty clear what Obama wants to do uh, with regards to the unions. Yeah, all you have to do is look at Chrysler, and he gave them a stake in a company that they didn't own. 